Hello, I'm Dr. Leonard Horowitz, and this is an urgent news bulletin about a new flu that is said to be making its way from Mexico into the United States as I broadcast. Skyrocketing stock values at Novavax Inc. precipitated by dozens of flu deaths in Mexico implicates a leading Anglo-American network of genetic engineers in a conspiracy to commit genocide. Dr. James S. Robertson, England's leading bioengineer of flu viruses for the vaccine industry, an avid promoter of U.S. government funding for lucrative biodefense contracts, along with collaborators at the U.S. Centers for Disease Control, the CDC, helped Novavax Inc. in Bethesda, Maryland, produce genetically modified recombinants of the avian, swine, and Spanish flu viruses H5N1 and H1N1, nearly identical to the unprecedented Mexican virus that has now spread to the United States. The outbreak was precisely timed to promote the company's new research and huge vaccine stockpiling contracts. The outbreak was precisely timed to promote the company's new research and huge vaccine stockpiling contracts. Scientists at the CDC are implicated through collaborations and publications involving private contracts with Novavax, a company that obtains its, quote, biosimilars through the CDC Influenza Branch Director Ruben O'Donis and Dr. Rick Bright, previously working with Donis at the CDC, now Novavax's Vice President of Global Influenza Programs. Evidence for this conspiracy to commit deadly duplicity in the vaccine industry includes the genetic markers on the novel flu virus now spreading from Mexico to America. The virus is, quote, genetically different from the fully human H1N1 seasonal influenza virus that has been circulating globally for the past few years, and quote, Reuters and government officials say. The new flu virus contains DNA typical to avian, swine, and human viruses, including elements from European and Asian swine viruses. This is a description that is pathognomonic or diagnostic of a virus that came from Robertson's circle of friends. No other group in the world takes H5N1 Asian flu infected chickens, brings them to Europe, extracts their DNA, combines their proteins with H1N1 viruses from the 1918 Spanish flu isolate, additionally mixes in swine flu genes from pigs, then reverse engineers them to infect humans. The end product that Reuters describes could only end up in Mexico via the United States from Britain in care of the CDC. Ruben Donis at the CDC had to have sent them to Novavax, where Rick Bright's team now implicated in a conspiracy to commit genocide, the mass killing of people for profit, has some explaining to do. Novavax's preliminary report in Journal of Virology, with co-authors from the CDC in Atlanta, was posted online at the precise time Mexican officials began reporting deaths from this new strain of flu that is clearly an unprecedented recombinant of at least these three viruses. Novavax's Johnny on the spot vaccine was prepared under the CDC's fast track approval process, speciously using these three strains never before seen in any human beings in Mexico, in fact, anywhere in the world. Therefore, the statistical probability this virus came from this company of experts is extremely high. Alternatively, anticipated arguments that the virus somehow arrived in Mexico serendipitously at this precise time in Novavax's economic history is ridiculously remote. These doctors' conflicting corporate, scientific, and financial interests evidence criminal malfeasance. The most chilling evidence against the Robertson Novavax vaccine pipeline, besides Robertson being the gatekeeper for multi-billion dollar vaccine stockpiling deals, is Robertson's influence over the European Medicines Agency, the EMEA, a quasi-corporate, quasi-scientific think tank serving the European Economic Union and the drug industry's special interests. Dr. Robertson is the principal investigator for the Division of Virology at the National Institute for Biological Standards and Control, the NIBSC, in England, akin to the U.S. FDA. During a meeting in April 2006, discussing the standardization of influenza vaccines on behalf of the World Health Organization, 
it was disclosed that the NIBSC is involved in the, quote, serological testing of vaccine trials, the preparation and distribution of influenza viruses to vaccine manufacturers, and the coordination of EU selections of strains of viruses to be used in vaccines, end quote. Participants disclose the EMEA persuades vaccine makers to bank on pandemics and invest in pandemic vaccines with the introduction of, quote, mock-up files, end quote, which is their unassuming way of describing new laboratory bioengineered influenza viruses, also referred to as, quote, biosimilars. The EMEA waives regulatory fees as an additional incentive to attract more business for their allegedly biodefense concerns. Dr. Robertson, the holder of intellectual property rights to the genetic technology used to produce the H5N1 and H1N1 mock-up files used to develop Novavax's vaccine, waived his ownership of this technology during the company's research phase only, with a guaranteed payoff when the vaccine is commercialized, Robertson's material trade agreement covering the transfer of these biosimilars to Novavax is expected to return millions of dollars when the vaccine is commercialized and sold to world governments. Novavax's commercialization and promotions of their vaccine is largely based on media hype, fanning fears in markets for their avian flu, Spanish flu, and swine flu concoctions. Never before this outbreak has such a virus, combining the world's most feared flu strains, ever been identified. Mexico's killer, therefore, evidence is a laboratory creation sourcing from either Novavax's lab directly or from their partners at the CDC and the NIBFC who maintain multi-million dollar incentives. The company synchronously timed professional publications, mass media releases, product representations and commercialization, evidence financial motives to commit duplicity in the vaccine industry and in public health, along with mass murder. Days ago, officials at the CDC expressed serious concerns about this novel flu strain causing a deadly pandemic, not disclosing their obvious knowledge that the outbreak must have sourced from the materials used in their cooperative studies with Novavax. These doctors' conflicting corporate, scientific, and financial interests evidence criminal malfeasance, killing dozens of people for publicity and duplicity in public health to increase marketability of their new vaccines is best described as serial homicide to advance genocide, defined as the mass killing or enslaving of people for profit. The most chilling evidence against Dr. Robertson and his EU research team, besides him being the gatekeeper and chief promoter for multi-billion dollar flu vaccine stockpiling deals, and besides his collaborators being caught red-handed here by hard science and common sense, is his stated position that he believes it is wise to, quote, prime, end quote, populations worldwide by releasing viruses he and his colleagues are creating. This warning comes from the April 27, 2006 scientific discourse in which Dr. Robertson and members of his World Health Organization working group recommended his biosimilars be used to, quote, prime the population in advance of the pandemic reaching the UK, end quote, or other nations. In other words, the doctors that hold infectious disease responsibility for the world have already decided to loose their viruses on unwitting populations in advance of threatened outbreaks. Finally, I want to warn you, the long-term risks of governments purchasing and people accepting vaccines for the flu are understudied to say the least. Yet the industry and corporate controlled governments declare war on biology and discourage green alternatives to vaccinations such as the most advanced silver hydrosols, for example, oxysilver with nano-sized antimicrobial silver, which is bonded to the oxygen in water, goes in, does its job, and leaves the body at virtually no risk and seriously much lower cost than what the vaccines are costing. There would be no need, therefore, to pollute people's bodies and the environment with heavy metals such as mercury and aluminum 
or suffering the side effects from vaccinations and antibiotics if public health officials promoted the new powerfully protective and curative silver hydrosols. This is Dr. Leonard Horowitz signing off for love528tv.net.